Hello chess family, it's me National Master Jesse James and today we're taking a look at round number three for my Denver Open. Unfortunately for me this is my last round. Most of the time I, I will go around to different cities and play chess tournaments but I'm mostly there just to have fun so I only played three out of the five rounds in this tournament. Um, it was a fun tournament nonetheless and well this time I got to play against a very young and promising player Nathan Yan and wow um, he ends up dropping a pawn pretty early in the game. With that being said he fights very very well very good resistance and unfortunately uh makes a, a bad move toward the end letting me win the game again so here we go we start off with d4 as i'm playing here as white knight f6 bishop g5 pawn e6 knight f3 d5 pawn to e3 here again you see my tory attack bishop b7 bishop d3 castles knight b to d2 c5 and c3 here everything's pretty much normal right now Knight b to d7, knight to e5, standard just grabbing space and not letting e5 get played in these lines. Here h6 got played, bishop f4, and unfortunately for young Nathan here, he makes a mistake and plays bishop d6. All right, white to move and win some material. What do you play? Oh, hopefully it was not too hard for this one. It was just knight takes on f7. Anytime there's an undefended piece, look for forced moves, and knight takes f7, took the cake here. Rook takes f7, bishop takes d6. Queen b6, pawn takes on c5, knight takes on c5, and here to not lose my pawn, I have to give away my, my beloved bishop here with bishop takes and then queen takes. Already here, I'm at a very good advantage. With that being said, again, Nathan just does a very good job on not giving up and keeps creating counterplay. Here I went ahead and castled, pawn to e5 move, and pawn to e4, another very standard move in these kind of TLCs, the Tory London Collie. After e4 here, I'm gonna try and create this isolated pawn here, and, uh, well, if you try not to push forward in the game, Nathan plays bishop g4, which I thought was pretty good. If you try to uh, take here, it becomes very simple. Um, well, obviously, you have knight takes e4, but even here, you can just play bishop c4, winning the exchange. And even if you just played regular here with uh, with with these moves, you'll see, again, you have an isolate pawn, and I'm, up, um, and I'm up an extra pawn. So this would not be too hard to convert. And, well, what else can you play here? He goes ahead and just plays bishop g4. Let's move this queen. Queen c2 got played. Rook to d8. And yeah, he's just doing a good job here. Even though he's down a pawn, his pieces are very active. I went ahead and played rook ae1. And here a very strange move, which I didn't think was too good, was pawn to b5. Um, he's definitely saying he's trying to put pressure on the queen side and maybe get some activity over here. But this b5 move was just really out of play. After this, I went ahead and played knight b3. Temple off the queen. Queen c6, and now I take on d5. So I was able to create the second weakness in this game, which was the e5 pawn. Uh, b5 and e5 are the weaknesses right now. Queen takes on d5, tempo off the bishop. And here I just play rook e3, defending the bishop and also getting ready for this rook coming over to e1. Now he saw my threat and played rook c7. Let's say he's not paying attention and then play something like a6 here. Why to move? What do you play here to get another good uh a good forcing line here all right hopefully you find it here we get to actually play the move pawn to c4 here and this is going to create some more weaknesses in his position why well we can't take back because bishop takes c4 is going to go ahead and put pressure on the rook over here and what else can you play here uh computer's giving queen to d6 and at this point well you can either take and grab another pawn or maybe we should just play pawn c5 and create a pass pawn here of course, he saw this idea, though. He played rook c7, stopping me. Let's go ahead and keep putting pressure. Pawn to h3, putting the bishop in a bad spot. Bishop back to e6, and now queen e2. A nice double attack here, attacking the b5 pawn and also on e5. All right, he went ahead and played queen d6. And, uh, well, you can take on e5 right away, but always develop with a threat here. What's the best move here for white? Here we go. Rook to d1, threatening bishop h7 check, and maybe even bishop takes b5 in some idea, uh, with, with some ideas. Here we played knight d5, and I did calculate for quite a while here, and I'll challenge you to find this move. Can we take on e5 here, or is knight f4 giving black sufficient counterplay? All right, what do we do here? Well, after this, you would actually just simply play the queen to e4 here. And I did analyze this for quite a while if this move was going to be okay or not. Because, well, knight takes d3 can get played. But here you simply just play rook takes on e6. And white is just much better in this position. All right, so in the game, he did not play this 
this idea, and I took the pawn. I played rook takes e5, he played bishop f7, and now I just continue to add more pressure. Bishop c2 for the pin. Queen f8, he was such a tenacious defender here. I could definitely see myself uh, getting into a bad position because you let them off the hook. Queen d3, threatening the checkmate on h7. G6 gets played, and weaknesses, weaknesses, weaknesses over versus my pawn structure, which is nice and safe. All right, I played queen g3 with some ideas about taking on g6. Rook c6 defending. Let's keep adding pressure. Knight to d4 on a good square. Rook to b6. And here I went ahead and played knight to f5. Here I had some tactics about thinking about taking on d5 and some variations with the knight to e7. And also knight takes h6 ideas. He's not falling for any of this. King to h7. Knight to e3. Let's just make some trades here. Knight takes, rook takes. Queen takes, queen takes, rook to b7 here. And here I went ahead and played pawn b3. Here I was already starting to not really play the best moves. I was getting a little low on time here. And it's, well, I guess b3 is an okay move. But it does make c3 weak. And, um, yeah, it's really interesting in these kind of positions when your opponent just keeps playing solid. That's why you should never give up in these games. b3 got played. Not a bad move. Queen d6 adding pressure to the rook. And I went ahead and played h4 here with the idea of just trying to put h5 and more pressure on this g6 pawn. Uh, the, obviously, the more trades I make, this is easily a winning endgame. He played pawn to b4. And I can simply just take this pawn, but I decided to make a pass pawn and play pawn to c4 here. King g7, pawn to c5. What's the saying? Pass pawns must be pushed. Queen went to f6. Pawn to h5. Again, I'm chipping away at this pawn structure here. And I would really like him to take or play g5 here and give me this open diagonal. And, well, best move takes. Uh, I got to do something about this. Bishop to d1. Here I did not continue up like I was thinking. Rook f5 here is a very strong move. Kicking the queen off and hopefully getting able, being able to jump onto this dark squares over here. For some reason, I was getting hallucinating and I was worried about... After the queen moves somewhere, for instance, queen a1 check, king h2, bishop g6 getting played. But here, computer just says, oh, no, you just play pawn c6 here, and you're doing really well. All right, back to the game. Here I played bishop d1. Here my plan was to put the bishop to f3 and then push my pawn to c6. So again, still making progress at a plus 6 advantage. Rook d7, bishop f3. Pawn to a6, pawn to c6. Rook c7. And queen to c5. Here again, I'm looking to make, make pressure and even thinking about trying to get this pawn across the board. b4 was being attacked. He played pawn to h4. The other idea, of course, attacking the h5 pawn. h4 move I do like a lot here. I can't take on b4 right away because, well, queen takes on e5 will happen. So, simple chess. Let's make a threat. Rook f5. Queen a1 check. King h2. And unfortunately for Nathan, he just couldn't handle the pressure anymore. He goes ahead and just plays queen c3. All right, white to move. What do you play here? All right, here there's plenty of winning moves here. You don't even have to trade queens here if you want to. You can keep adding pressure. But here, queen to d6 is a very good way kicking the rook away. And I don't know, after something like rook a7 here, bishop e4, this game's going to end very fast, and he might be getting checkmated over here. You can't even play bishop g6 because, well, the queen comes in for check. You have queen takes g6, another way to win here. Oof. Well, in the game, I was being lazy, so I just went ahead and traded queens. And after pawn takes rook to c5, he's just losing the c3 pawn. And I'll be pushing these pawns forward very, very fast. All right, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this third round from my Denver Open 2022. We'll see you in the next video.